is probably the hundredth time I've thought about quitting my PhD. And with my qualifying exams just around the corner, the thought of downgrading to a master's and stepping away from it all felt more real than ever. Hi, I'm Chasing Lies, a second year part-time PhD student in Singapore, and lately, I've been asking myself, do I really want to keep going? I never thought I'll ever find myself wanting to quit my PhD. This was something I fought so hard to get. After graduation, I spent two years working as a research assistant and during that time, my passion for research only grew. Unlike many who pursue a PhD because they're unsure of what else to do, I was certain this was the path I wanted. Still, the first time I applied, I was rejected. The second time, I had to take the newly introduced GRE requirement test, applied to four different programs, and finally, I got accepted into two. I eventually chose to do a part-time PhD in cardiovascular diseases. At the same time, it felt like everything was finally falling into place. I even remember half-joking with my peers that my road to a PhD had been tougher than most local students, and they told me things would only get better from here. But I guess, it didn't really. I first started noticing something was off when I realised my principal investigator had clear favourites. It didn't take long to see that he was especially biased towards students from the same country as him. I had actually been really cautious when choosing a PhD lab. I've heard enough stories to know that a good or bad PI could make or break the whole experience. This was someone I've known for two years before joining. I even spoke to some of his lab members beforehand, and everything seemed normal. So I decided to settle here. But once I joined, the reality felt different. I was shocked to see how he gave opportunities based on favoritism, not ability. I brought up my concerns with some ex-lab members. One of my seniors told me, if your PI is biased, then prove that you're capable. Make it impossible for him to ignore you. And for a while, things did seem to get a little better. I made a few good friends in the lab and my PI started to notice my work. And he even gave me a few new opportunities. For a moment, I thought maybe things are going to be okay after all. Well, until they wouldn't. So here's the tea. Someone I trusted in the lab turned on me. I shared my protocols, helped her out. But when I needed one from her, she said no. My PI begged her told me to give her my cells. She ran one small experiment, just a tiny part of the whole project, and when we submitted the paper, I was instructed to write a fake protocol for her experiment. I did 95% of the work, she did maybe 5%, but we both got co-author credit. And it wasn't just this one incident. I started noticing a pattern. My PI would give first authorship or first author opportunities to his favourites, even when it was clear that they didn't deserve it. For context in research, first authorship is a big deal. It's supposed to go to the person who did the most work. But in this lab, it felt more like a popularity contest than a merit-based system. I used to believe research was fair, that it was fun, meaningful, even something that helped move society forward. But this experience showed me the darker side, how unfair, political and disheartening research can really be. And so, I really did consider quitting my PhD. I clearly wasn't his favourite, and I wasn't getting the opportunities I thought I would. I had only my PhD project to rely on, just that one project. In academia, authorship matters. It's not just about doing the work, it's about being seen. 
and without strong first author papers, it's going to be harder to build a future in research. At some point, I started questioning myself. What's the point of staying if I'm already being set up to fall behind? I find it quite ridiculous that the reason I considered quitting my PhD wasn't because I lost interest in research, but because I lost trust in the system. After debating for a few weeks, weighing every option and outcome, I decided to stay. I'm already halfway through, and the idea of starting over, spending another 4-5 or five years somewhere else just felt overwhelming. And after 2 years of work, I've started to make my PI see the value in my project. Like one of my seniors once told me, make it impossible for your PI to ignore you. As much as opportunities matter, having that PhD qualification is just as important, especially if I want to build a future in this field. Besides, every lab comes with its own set of problems. I kept thinking about my senior story, how she was completely overlooked for years until she proved herself and became someone her PI couldn't do without. Maybe this isn't just an academia problem. Maybe every career has its version of unfair systems and silent struggles. It's frustrating, but I'm learning to navigate the system rather than let it break me. Even though the system I'm in is heavily flawed, even though I often feel overlooked or even a little crushed by it, I still hold on to what brought me here in the first place. Curiosity, purpose, and the desire to become a better researcher. I didn't come this far just to give up now. And I truly believe that as I grew stronger, keep learning and let my work speak for itself, opportunities will come. I will find my way into a better system, because eventually, it becomes impossible to ignore someone who refuses to stay invisible. So if you're struggling too, if you ever felt unseen, unsupported, or on the verge of giving up, please know that you're not alone. Keep showing up, keep building your voice and most importantly never forget why you started anyway there's just a little update on what's been going on these past few weeks if you're thinking about doing a phd please please choose your pi carefully keep your options open talk to the lab members and don't be afraid to ask the uncomfortable questions it can really make or break your experience <laughs>